The short answer is yes, but I'm gonna elaborate. Hey everyone, Jeremy here. I'm about to talk about Luke Skywalker and why he deserves a TV show. And it's gonna touch on some things you're probably not gonna think about. Well, some of you will, obviously. But before I even get into it, anyone who has not seen the last season of The Mandalorian or not finished it, please bow out now, save this, come back later till you're done because I'm gonna to touch on some things that are definitely in the absolute spoiler territory. So just go away, go. Do yourself a favor, go watch that, then come back. All right, you've been warned. So anyways, now that we've actually gotten Luke Skywalker back in live action and seen him in his prime, it's got everyone a buzz and for good reason. And so I wanted to talk about why we need a Luke Skywalker TV series, not just want. I'm talking we need a Luke Skywalker TV series. If you think about it, it is in a prime position to happen. Whenever there's a gap in time in the Star Wars time frame, a lot of time, we always fill it with wonderful stories. Hopefully Lucasfilm will understand that. If you look at the time gap between uh, the prequels and the original trilogy, we've been getting great content. We've gotten Rebels, we've gotten Rogue One, we've gotten Solo, we've gotten Jedi Fallen Order. We're getting all these wonderful things that are filling in the little gaps and telling us wonderful stories inside of there. But not only that, but we have 30 years between the original trilogy, between Return of the Jedi, Luke, until we get to the sequels. We haven't even touched on much of that time frame. Even with The Mandalorian, we've seen maybe a year, maybe two, in that time frame after Return of the Jedi. That is not a lot. We haven't even seen Luke go from learner, which he was basically a learner at the end of, well, he was a knight, but still a learner at the end of Return of the Jedi, to the master he becomes. Heck, in that five years, he obviously got really good. But we haven't seen where he progressed after that. How he started his own temple. How he started his own order. We've not touched on any of that. But more so than just wanting to see it, we need to. And I'm going to tell you why. When the prequels originally came around, they were not loved by all. They really were not. If you're from a younger generation than me, you probably loved the prequels because they were honestly aimed more towards you. They are more acceptable, I should say, to you just because you didn't grow up on the original trilogy necessarily. You grew up with the prequels. For us that grew up with the original trilogy, it was much, much harder to accept this new way of telling Star Wars stories. The prequels were not loved by a lot of fans. I mean, people would go to conventions, they'd be wearing I love all three Star Wars film t-shirts. I remember those. They were a thing. They would sit, they would sit there and say the prequels never existed, that they weren't their Star Wars, that they would start petitions, just tell them to remake the movies. Is any of this sounding familiar in 2020? And probably 21 and probably 22. The same thing is going on right now. Now, I'm not ever going to say that the sequels are going to get the love that the prequels do now. But there's a slight chance. And I'm going to tell you why, or at least a way to smooth out some edges. And that key thing was the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars turned a lot of fans around. They saw the excellent writing in the Clone Wars. They saw how compelling the time period was. How rich it was in mythos. They saw these fantastic characters that they got to know and love. They got to expand on the story in ways they never even thought about or they had wanted in the movies and hadn't seen making all those rough edges they found in the prequels a lot more enjoyable. I can say this because I had a foot in both camps. There were times I loved the prequels. There were times I hated them. At this point, I love them, but I love them warts and all. <laughs> I still look at them and go, ooh, they're, they're really flawed. But I love the story so much and I love the characters so much. I I'm in. I'm not going to say this would happen with the sequels, but I think you could at least smooth over some rough edges with a Luke Skywalker series. Now, what I'm about to say is going to suppose that Disney isn't going to wipe away the 
uh, sequels with a time, almost called it time after time, the world between worlds. They're not going to wipe it out. They're not going to do some time travel shenanigans. They're not going to say, nope, we're just decanonizing it. No, I I just genuinely don't think they're going to end up doing that. They're just going to put them aside and quietly not talk about them much anymore. I, instead of Instead of going through the whole process of trying to wipe them out of existence. So what I'm about to say is going to suppose they're going to stay. And that's the part you're probably going to hate. But hear me out because maybe you'll want to add to what I'm saying. If we, if they were to give us a Luke Skywalker series, all it would do is enrich the canon, even the sequel canon, because we would finally get, we would get to see young Kylo Ren, young Ben Solo, and get to know and love him like we did Anakin. We would get to know Luke as a Jedi Master like we did Obi-Wan Kenobi. We would get to see other characters from outside like the EU that might get brought in and made canon flesh out this giant world this 30 years we have to play with you know bring in someone like Mara Jade please you can have that character in there heck maybe she dies in the temple you know you can flesh out so many things you go from him being to basically what was a learner to a master to watching his own Padawan start to fall Tell us that story. Enrich that universe. If you love or hate the sequels, which quite frankly, if you love the sequels, you're never going to hear me bash them on here. I'll never bash someone for something they love like that because I wish I loved them too. But you have to recognize they're divisive. So with a series like this, you're bridging both. You're bridging the gap just like the Clone Wars did. You're bridging that whole aspect of, well, the original trilogy people and the prequelists want this, and the sequelists want this too. Bring it together. You're, you're going to start at the end of the original trilogy and lead up to the sequels. Granted, us people over here may not like this, but if you tell this story well enough, we'll at least accept them. And the sequel fans just get more content for them too. I mean... All we're doing is enriching the world for them as well. It's a win-win. It's a trifecta win, to be honest, because quite frankly, Disney wins because money-wise, this thing's gonna go gangbusters. The sequelists win because it's just more lore for their movies, and the original trilogy and prequelists get more Luke. Who's losing here? The only thing is, you obviously couldn't do CG Luke like they did in Mando, but you would just bring in you know, everybody keeps saying Sebastian Stan or someone else. It doesn't have to be Sebastian Stan, anyone else, really. Bring someone in that can play Luke. We understand he's aged out. Mark is aged out. We love Mark. I want Mark to be in everything. But we can't CG him in <laughs> everything. Sometimes you just need to pass on the torch. And this is speaking as someone who's a diehard Luke fan. I love Luke so much. So yeah, that's my reasoning. That is why I think we need a Luke Skywalker series. We don't just want it. We need it. It will bridge the fans together. It's a win for everyone. If done correctly. I mean, if you drop the ball on this one, then you're done, Disney. But that's, you've got the right people in place anymore. You seem to know what you're doing now. So run with it. All right. Don't hurt me too bad in the comments. <laughs> you know, this is just my theory. Maybe you have ideas what, maybe there are reasons why you think there shouldn't be a Luke series, or maybe you have reasons why there should, and you want to express those. Put those in the comments below. I'm curious. What are your thoughts on why or why not there should be a Luke's theories? I'm always open to hearing new points of view. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to see more content like this. As always, before I go, please take care of yourselves. And please take care of each other. Thanks for watching.